about to perform the surgery and the person is having a hard time getting the surgery not that you can't do it but their body is almost rejecting it at what time what would the course of action be after then considering that it really needs to be done but the body is having a hard time accepting it so so f when we do these uh, cardiac ablation procedures, they're almost always elective. So patients have these heart rhythm problems, and almost 90 to 95% of the time, they come in as an outpatient. So we have tried to treat it with medicine, and the medicine's not working, and they're coming in on an elective basis to have these procedures done. Almost 100% of the time, these patients are under sedation and under anesthesia. So they are pretty much not aware of the procedure happening. Now, when we say there's really not, it's not a question of rejection. Now, we, as I said, we have to watch out for, you know, clot forming in the heart or inflammation in the heart and things like that, that, you know, that's why we have that intracardiac echo. So that helps us keep an eye on what's going on in the heart. And if we see signs of, you know, high, you know, high levels of inflammation or clot forming in the heart, then we know it's time to stop because there's always another day. We stop. We reassess everything, and we come back another day with a, another plan. Sometimes it's a different kind of wire that we have to use. It's not a very common situation, but we still don't take it lightly, and that's why we use the intracardiac echo in most, almost all of our procedures. There is, you know, plan B is always usually many times medications. The problem with these medicines is they do have a lot of side effects. <laughs> 